Hello guys and welcome to another episode of my Ability System series. Before we start today's episode, there are two things that I wanted to talk about. First off, you may already have noticed that we've got an intro now. And I just wanted to say lots of thanks to the user Valos, who I met on my Discord channel and who did this epic intro for me for free, actually. So big thank you to Valos for raising the quality of this channel. And the other thing that I'd like to talk to you about is that you might remember when we imported the textures, I told you that I didn't draw the icons here myself, but just found them on the internet. Actually, I had to notice that those icons are part of an asset pack that is sold on the marketplace here. 150 plus fantasy spell icons by Forrest Amal. So of course it was completely illegal to upload them for free on Mediafire, but I actually got to contact the creator of this asset pack and surprisingly he told me that he's fine with that as long as you're not using them in the release product. If you want to do that, I would suggest you buy this asset pack. There are a lot of cool icons in there and it's not that expensive either. Also, the creator of this pack has a YouTube channel himself, just called Forrest Amal, where he does a lot of character and scene art and actually uploads really in-depth tutorials about art and drawing techniques and stuff. So if you're interested in that kind of art, please check him out. He seems to be a really nice guy and also does great content, so I think he deserves some more attention. Alright, now to get started with this episode, what I'd like to start with is going to our third personal skill character here. And we want to set it up so that we can actually use the spells on our hotkeys. But we don't know which keys are used for that, because that's defined in our hotkeys array, which is completely dynamic. So what we do here is search for event any key. And when any key is pressed, we will go into a gate. And on the exit here, we will add a sequence with two pins. First, what we want to do is close the gate. What this simply means is that we cannot spam buttons to cast spells at the same time. So what we will do is close the gate and we will reopen it when we've checked whether there is any spell assigned to this hotkey. On the then one, we will go into a for each loop with break. And the array we want to cycle through comes from the main widget. It will be the all hotkey slots. So let's connect that to the array. And to check whether there is a spell for this specific key that was pressed, Let's get the key of the hotkey. So hotkey. We want to check whether that equals the input key from event any key. And the other condition will be that this hotkey actually has a spell assigned. So we get the assigned spell. And check for is valid. All right. Then let's add a branch. And if both conditions are met, we will get the assigned spell here and try cast spell before breaking out of the loop because we already found a hotkey using the key from the input event here. If you want to, you can add some reroute nodes so it doesn't get completely messy here. And once that loop is completed, what we want to do is reopen our gate so we can press keys again. One thing I should like to mention as well is that we don't want to start closed here because we only open it when we went through the loop and if we start closed we will never execute that. So let's compile and save. Feel free to add a comment box around that if you want. And now we need to implement the logic of casting a spell. What we want to do is go into our blueprints, skill actors and open up the master skill because we've got an event on try cast spell. Before we implement that though, I would like to add another custom event, which is called initialize spell cast. So this will be called when the attempt to cast the spell succeeds, then we can initialize its cast. And what we want to do on try cast spell is add a branch and we need to check for a few conditions here. First off, our spell should not be on cooldown. So off of the on cooldown search for not and use the not boolean, not not equal, add an end. And let's add a pin because in total that will be three conditions. So it should not be on cooldown, neither should it be casted currently. And the last condition will be that our player, so the player reference, is also not casting at the moment. So search for casting, is casting, and add a not boolean. 
then connect the end to the condition. And if all of those booleans here are false, we can initialize the spell cast. Then we can do initialize spell cast, but before that, again, we will add a custom event, which is called on spell cast. Let's drag that to the side here. When we initialize the spell cast, we need to check for another condition, that is that our player has enough mana to cast the spell. Let's search for an if statement or a branch and drag in the player reference, get stat. Stat here will be mana, then break it, and we only want to see the current value. All right, current value. We want to check whether that is greater or equal to the current stage, and there we want to break it as well, and we only want to see the mana cost. So do we have enough mana to cast a spell? Let's add that to the branch. If not, let's just print out a string. Not enough mana left to cast this spell. And maybe make that red. Duration of 1.5 seconds. If it's true, however, we can set currently casted to true. Get the player reference and call on begin spellcast or just begin spellcast. The casted skill will just be a reference to itself because we're in the master skill right now. After we begin casting the spell, what we can do is off of the player, let's modify a stat. That will be mana, it will be animated, and we want to subtract the mana cost. To do this, just get the mana cost and multiply that by minus one. Plug that in for the buy. And after we modify the stat, we can call on spell cast. All right, that's initialized spell cast. Before we do on spell cast, again, we want to add a custom event, which will be called on cast completed. Let's drag that somewhere down here. And when we cast the spell, the only thing we want to do in our parent class is get the skill info, break it, and we want to see the name. Then let's use format text. Format will be casting, then a blank space, and then in curly brackets, the name. For the name, just plug that in from the break note, and we can convert that to a string and print it out. Set the text color to something like blue and duration maybe 0.5 seconds. After we printed that out, we can already call oncast completed. And actually this on spellcast event is the only thing here that you need to override when you create different types of spells. Before we do oncast completed, again, another custom event called on cooldown expired, which we will call in on cast completed. So we need to create that first. And in on completed, let's get the player reference here. And we want to call end spell cast. Cast the skill is a reference to ourselves. Then we can set on cooldown to be true. And actually, let's just print out a string spell on CD for cooldown, also only the ratio of 0.5, maybe red, something. Then we can set currently casted to false. And let's get the hotkey, check if that's valid. If not, we don't need to do anything. But if it is, let's get the skill button and set is enabled to be false. Get its skill icon and we want to set the color and opacity of that, something like a gray to indicate the spell is currently on cooldown. How you can get that is just for R, G and B, I'll type in 0.33. That will give you something like a medium to dark gray, Hit okay. Also, let's get the cooldown material 
and we want to set scalar parameter. Parameter name will be percent and the value will be one. Also, let's get the cooldown image. And off of that, let's set the visibility to hit test invisible. So we can see the cooldown, but our cursor won't hit it. Then get the cooldown text. Let's also connect that to set visibility. So we also show that. And we also want to set the text of this. Maybe let's rather do that before we set the visibility. So you don't see it and then it updates, but it updates before it's visible. Text here will come from our current stage that we need to break. And let's show cooldown only. Then let's convert that to a text. We don't want grouping. Now for how we will handle the actual cooldown, we won't use a delay node or a timer. We will use a timeline. So add timeline called cooldown timeline. And we will just leave that empty because we don't know about its length yet. The length of it will be the cooldown. So what you need to do under components, drag in the cooldown timeline and set timeline length to the cooldown. And we will also do that if our hotkey is not valid. After we set the timeline length, we obviously want to play it from start. And now for what happens when it updates, let's again check if there is a valid hotkey that is assigned. If not, we don't have to do anything. But if so, let's get the cooldown material because we need to update the percentage there. Set scalar parameter value, name being percent. And to figure out the value, what you need to do is drag in the cooldown timeline, get the playback position, so where is it currently, and divide that by the length of the timeline to get the percentage that was already played. And since we start with the percentage of one when nothing of the cooldown has expired yet, we need to subtract float and we will subtract what we have here from one to get our new value. Then off of the hotkey, we also need to update the cooldown text. So set text. And for the in text, we will convert a float to text, to text float, right? Expand that, rounding mode will be half to even. We won't use grouping. And the value will simply be the length of the timeline minus the position, which means that will be the rest that is yet to be played. Plug that in for the value. And one thing that is really common for displaying cooldown is that you usually just show the seconds left, so four, three, two, one second left. And for the last second, you will see it like 0 0.9, 0 0.8 and so on. So what we need to do is modify this maximum fractional digit and let's use a select node based on whether the timeline length minus the playback position is greater than one. Plug that in for the index. If it's false, so means it's less than one, then we will use one fractional digit. But if not, we will use zero. Let's actually collapse that then. And let's go back to where we set the text here, because here we don't want any fractional digit at all, so just set that to zero. All right? So that's it for updating it. Once our timeline has finished playing, we can call on cooldown expired, pile and save. And in on cooldown expired, we will set on cooldown to false, obviously. Get the hotkey, check whether it's valid again. And if it is, let's get the skill button and re-enable it. So set is enabled back to true 
Also, our skill icon should not be grayed out anymore. So let's get the skill icon. Set color and opacity to a white with an alpha of one. One thing I forgot here is if the hotkey is valid indeed, we need to check for another thing. And that is whether it's deactivated. So let's add a branch after the is valid. And if that's false, we will do what we added before. If the cooldown expired, but the key was deactivated because for example, we are casting another spell at the moment, the skill button should not be re-enabled and will still be grayed out. And what we want to do afterwards is off of the hotkey, get the cooldown image, get the cooldown text, and set visibility of either of them to hidden, then connect the other one to the target as well. Let's line that up on the false path but we will also call it on the true path. Just to show that the cooldown was expired, so we will hide that, but it will still be grayed out because it's deactivated instead. That should be all of the functionality we need to have for casting and cooldown. Let's actually check whether we already set up some cooldown here. Six seconds for the flame nova and for arcane side, it should be four seconds. So let's see whether everything is working. If I hit play, I have my two spells and 200 mana at the moment. If I just press the F6 here, it reduces 50 mana and you can see the cooldown. Now it's enabled again and it actually reads casting arcane side spell on cooldown. Can do the same thing with the flame nova, but it will say not enough mana left. Maybe we need 100. Yes, see the cooldown there as well. And if we just quickly restart here, so we have some mana, I can hit the sign hotkeys, so F6 or F7 to use those spells. Alright, that's working perfectly fine. Thank you for watching and in the next episode we will handle dragging and dropping spells to sign them to different hotkeys. See you in the next episode.